Okay, we are live, I think. Um, can we please, can you please let me know in the chat that you can hear me? And that you can see me okay, please. Anybody who knows anything about me and technology knows that anything could happen here. <laughs> This could go terribly wrong. Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thanks for letting me know. All right, let's double check that you can hear the guitar because last time we tried one of these, there was some type of noise cancellation on and you couldn't hear the guitar. So let's give that a try. Yeah, the guitar's coming through okay. Alright, cool. This is amazing. We're off to a good start. I've connected up all the wires and everything seems to be working. Okay, so everybody, um, wow, we've got so much cool stuff to talk about today. I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, first of all, um, where where is everybody? Like, let me know whereabouts in the world you are, please. I'm in Chester, in England. Where are you all based? It's usually like America, England, Australia, usually, with a bit of France. Thanks for the feedback, everybody. Thanks for letting me know that the guitar's coming through. Norfolk. Oh, yes. Yeah, my dad used to live in Norfolk, Montgomery, Alabama, New York City. Love that city. One of my favourite cities in the whole world. Preston. Northwich UK, wow. Oh no, Norwich UK. <laughs> North Carolina, just up the road in Scotland. Retford, Nottinghamshire, England. All right, cool. Great, well, thank you everybody for coming along and joining us on this call. Um, so basically what this is gonna to be today is it's gonna be a live stream where I'm gonna sort of share some ideas with you um, for about 15 minutes, and then we'll get into some Q&A um, and then I'm going to let you know about the new um, NGA membership. Malta, oh my gosh, one of my favourite countries in the whole world. Another place where I, my family used to live. I've been to Malta many times. Welcome, welcome Dave. Um, good to see good to see you again, Dave. Yeah, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk today. We've got a topic that we're going to get stuck into for about 15 minutes. Then we'll do some Q&A. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about the brand new NGA membership, which we've been working on for over a year. Um, kind of amazing that it's taken that long but we've made something really really epic and I'm super excited to share it with you all um, all right cool let's dive in everything seems to be working this is this is a minor miracle um, so yeah let's dive in let's dive into the, the topic so today what we're going to talk about on the live stream is um, is how to consistently make progress as a guitarist now first of all like why is this important well obviously we all want to get better on the guitar we want to feel like we're we're improving of course we do but also it's important just for your levels of fun and enthusiasm. And essentially one of the main words that you need to bear in mind when you're learning guitar, when you're a guitarist, is momentum. You wanna just keep going as much as you can. It's really important. Without fun, without enthusiasm, without momentum, you can stagnate as a guitarist at all levels, by the way, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate or an advanced guitarist. And everybody at some point reaches one of the dreaded plateaus so I'm sure some of you have been there. I know I've been there many times over the years. Every guitarist that I know reaches some plateaus. When you're learning the guitar, like progress isn't linear. You know, if you imagine time and the ability like on like a graph, it doesn't just go up, you know, it's not how it works. What happens is you kind of go up and go flat for a while and then you'll have a bit of a breakthrough and you'll go up a bit and then you kind of plateau for a while. So what I want to share with you in this video today is the is 15 ideas that I know that work really well for breaking out of those ruts that you can get stuck in as a guitarist and making sure that you're always pushing into new ground. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to just say, by the way, like it's completely normal to plateau as a guitarist. And in some ways, I, I sometimes think maybe it's even a good thing, you know, to just kind of consolidate and enjoy where you're at as a guitarist. Um, but of course, you don't want to be there for too long. Otherwise, as I said, you will, you will start to stagnate. So it's normal to plateau as a guitarist. If you're in that place at the moment, dude, I hear you. Like I've been there so many times. The solution is you have to break new ground. It's as simple as that. 
you have to make it fun you've got to fire up your guitar line and mojo you've got to push into new areas push into um, take on board some new ideas and that enthusiasm as you're exploring new things you can feel yourself growing as a musician and that kind of fuels you to keep going so essentially that's that's the main thing that i want to express today is that you have to be intentional about where you want to go next as a guitarist and intentionally be trying to grow and improve push into other areas all right 15 ideas that i want to share with you let's dive in oh before we do um nico asked the question if we need to leave where can we get the info later um, nico i will email it to you um, if you're on our email list if you're not head over to the website nationalguitaracademy.com you can join the email list there i'll send out all the information by email um, also, I think this video will be left on YouTube and at the end of the call today I'll put some stuff in the video description. So either email or here on YouTube in this video description is where you can get the information later. Um, okay, 15 things that I want to I want to share with you. Number one is that you're practicing regularly. Now I'm going to assume that this is a given. Yeah, if you're sitting at home, with the, make sure your guitar is somewhere you can get it easily. Yeah, we want it to be something you can pick up at a moment's notice. I'm going to assume, if you're on this call, you know, about how to consistently make progress as a guitarist, I'm going to assume that you play pretty regularly. I hope that that's, I hope that that's the case. Um, so I'm going to sort of assume that number one on this list of practice regularly, get your hands on the guitar, be playing, I'm going to assume you're already doing that. Number two, this is really important one that I wanted to share with you, and that is, it's important that you intentionally try and cross thresholds as a guitarist. Now, some of you that have been following my work for years will already have heard me speak about this, but there are certain moments as a guitarist, there are certain thresholds that you need to cross. And once you cross them, the instrument's never the same again. Now, there's four big ones. There's loads of little ones. But the four big ones are, number one is being able to play open chords. So E minor, yes, C, G, D, A minor. Yeah, all of those, all of the chords that happen here in the first three frets. So the chords that happen there in those first three frets that have open strings in, we call them open chords. So the first threshold is being able to play open chords and being able to change between them fluidly, fluently without, a, without any types of delay. And for most people who are learning the guitar when they start, that is bass camp, isn't it? That's the first milestone they want to reach. And once you've done that, a whole world of music opens up to you. You can play loads and loads of songs and really that's the first point that most guitarists want to reach. That's the first threshold moment. The second one is bar chords. Now I think it's the hardest one to cross, bar chords. A bar chord, for those of you that don't know, it's when you press down the strings with one finger and then make a chord shape in front of it. Yeah, so something like this. That's a bar chord. I've barred here and then I've applied the chord in front of it. And what the bar does is it raises the key of the instrument. It does the job that a capo would do, yeah? So ordinarily, we were using a capo. A capo is just a clamp, isn't it? That's what a capo does. But if we use a bar chord, it's like our finger is the capo and our thumb, we're making a clamp, then we play a chord there. Why are bar chords a threshold moment? Well, once you can play bar chords, the whole fret, the whole, the whole neck opens up to you. You can go anywhere on the fretboard. You know, all of a sudden, like the guitar is like a different instrument. There are loads more rhythmic options different ways you can play, different styles that just aren't possible with open chords because you're in contact with all of the strings so you've got complete control over how those notes are voiced which you do not have when you play open chords because some of the strings are ringing open you can only really control them if you deaden them with palm muting or something like that many many more rhythmic options when you're playing with bar chords also the cool thing about bar chords is you can play like 12 chords with one chord shape because bar chords are movable shapes yeah this e shape here I've, that's an e chord if i move it up it's f if i play the same shape two frets higher it's g two more frets higher it's a b c and so on and so on my hand isn't changing where it is on the fretboard is changing and that changes the chord so bar chords are the next threshold moment the next one after that for me is learning pentatonic scale. So being able to play basic lead guitar. You know, just like a simple pentatonic scale, which is where most people begin with lead. Which is a, you know, a very, very cool moment for every guitarist. Once you learn basic pentatonic scales, 
then you can start improvising, you can start jamming over tracks, you can start writing the solos and feeling like a lead guitarist. And certainly for me, when I could start to play lead guitar, I felt like, yeah, you know, like I'm doing it, you know, I was having so much fun. Um, lead guitar, I think, is the most fun you can have with your guitar. And then the fourth threshold moment is when you understand basic music theory. So, you know, there's lots of people that would argue there's many other sort of micro thresholds that you can cross. But for me, they're the big four. It's being able to play open chords, being able to play bar chords, being able to play basic pentatonic scales and understanding basic music theory. Because when you understand some music theory, you start to see the guitar in a different way because you start to understand how things work. It's a, it's a game changer. It really is. I avoided music theory for years because I thought it was kind of dull and scary. It sounded boring to me. Theory, you know, that was like the opposite of what I came to the guitar for, which was expression, um, you know, and doing something arty and fun. Um, but that was a massive, massive mistake. Understanding a little bit of music theory is one of the most empowering things that a musician can do. It's, it's really essential. So if you haven't crossed those four thresholds yet, and you feel like you want to continue growing as a musician, then straight away, get on those four thresholds, yeah? Open chords, bar chords, pentatonic scales, and knowing some basic theory. If you make, can maybe do two of them, then let's explore the other two. You know, if there's three of them and the one of them you haven't done, then that's where you need to go next. The trick is, as a guitarist, is you want to always be expanding in a well-rounded way as a musician. And that pretty much doesn't happen for anybody unless they do some type of structured academic qualification in music because most people just kind of learn in a very lopsided way and just by whatever appeals to them or whatever their friends direct them to try or whatever it may be it's quite hard i think to really learn in a well-rounded way especially like there's loads of stuff on youtube youtube's an amazing resource for guitar learners but it isn't very well structured in most on most channels all right, so that's the second key thing I wanted to share with you. And that was really one of the biggest ones I wanted to share today, which was the concept of these threshold moments that can help you as a guitarist. All right, number three. We can go through these a bit more, a bit more quickly now. Number three is learn new songs. So intentionally learn new songs and try new genres. I think that's really important. Don't just play. If you're into rock and blues like me, don't just do that stuff. You know, explore some other things. I've been learning some folk songs lately. Um, and it's new and interesting and there's some interesting, you know, different finger, finger picking patterns and different styles of play. I think if you only ever do one thing, you know, like I used to have a boss years ago who used to say to me, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. And he used to really annoy me when he said it because, <laughs> because he said it all the time. And, it, and of course he was right. And I think as a guitarist, that's so true. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. If you want to keep growing as a musician, you have to try new things. You have to branch out. So learn new songs and also try learning new songs that are in different genres. Remember, every song you learn, you take something from it. It might just be a small thing, but you take that with you into your toolkit as a musician. Okay, number four on our list of 15 things, and that is play with others. So play with other musicians. You will learn so much from playing with other people. It's crazy. You pick up so many things from them spot so many things that they do um you know so whether that's at a jam night or whether that's at like a, lo a local folk club or a jam or whatever it may be an open mic night anything at all um playing with other musicians is a brilliant way for you to improve as a musician and a lot of people don't do that it's such a shame you know so many people just they just play at home and that's okay you know that's still very re rewarding but i really wish that people would get out there more and connect with other people in there in their local area to play makes you a much better guitarist okay next of all number five is to watch other players watch them carefully if there's something somebody does that you like the sound of like try and look at the technique what is it that they're doing you know i mentioned on the live stream recently about that um, brilliant clip of donna Grat uh, donna grantis who used to play uh, lead guitar for prince and she did some really cool stuff in this solo and i was like what is she doing there um, you know, so I really sort of studied the technique that she was doing and it was really in that instance She just wasn't playing very many notes She was really letting the notes sustain and using her effects to create some incredible tones and For me, I tend to play way too many notes as a lead guitarist Even though I'm always trying to leave space Which is super important always be watching what other players do 
Um, you can get so many great ideas from watching what they do. But I think sometimes you have to, there might just be like a fleeting moment in a solo where you just hear one tone and it's like, wow, what was that? You know, and you have to really focus on that bit. Like right now, there's loads of videos of extreme. New No Betten Court is like the extreme are back on after a 15 year hiatus. And then the guitar world, you know, there's all these different videos flying around of him, like just blowing people's minds and melting people's faces with this guitar skill. And like some of the stuff that he's doing is just wild, you know, like harmonics all over the fretboard, um, just crazy runs that he does. It's like, you know, I don't know, I just, I'm, I'm blown away by the creativity of other guitarists. This instrument has been around for so long and people are still finding new, new ways to make sounds with it. It's incredible. Okay, number six, courses. So of course, we want you to learn as broadly as we can as a musician. You can learn, of course, National Guitar Academy. That's what we do. We, we make guitar courses, but also, you know, there's Fender Play, Jam Play, Guitar Tricks. Uh, there's loads of, you know, other companies out there um, that are making guitar courses. And of course, you can take them in schools and colleges near to you. I always encourage people to try and do some type of structured learning because, like I said earlier, it makes you a much more well-rounded musician. If you don't, if you're not following some type of structure, you can just go off down blind alleys and, and you, you, you don't end up being able to see the broader picture. If you want to be a, a sort of capable, well-rounded musician who can improvise and have a really good appreciation of music, you have to be well-rounded. Okay, next of all, books. I still think that books are the best value, like bang for your book, in terms of you know how much they cost versus what you get back from them. Um, if you search on our YouTube channel, I recently did a video um, which was like, my five favorite guitar books or five books that made me a better guitarist, something like that. If you search on our YouTube channel, you'll find it. Some brilliant books on there. My favorite one is probably the Eric Andreas book, which I recommend to everybody all the time. Um, I can't remember the title of it now. What's it called? Uh, Eric Andreas is on YouTube as Your Guitar Sage, and his book is amazing. I absolutely loved it. I've recommended that to so many people. I've bought it for students because I love the book so much. Um, number eight on our list of 15. I feel like I'm reading the charts here. Number straight in at number eight on the list of 50. <laughs> number eight is YouTube. So of course you can scour YouTube. There's so much guitar stuff on there, right? My favorite YouTube channels, Rhett Schull, Rick Beato, Marty Schwartz, Eric Andreas, Chris Book, Andertons, Mary Spender, Paul Davids. I think that's most of them. Justin Hawkins, I like his channel as well. Um, again, you know, I just love watching that stuff, you know, because you take little ideas from, you know, um, Tim Pierce as well is another really good one. I've learned so much about the guitar from using YouTube. It's crazy. Um, okay, number nine, uh, try a new role. Now, as a guitarist, we tend to put things into three roles, don't we? We have lead guitar, we have rhythm guitar, we have bass guitar, and generally they're the three that I would say are the most, are the most common. If you see yourself primarily as a rhythm guitarist, yeah, you're kind of chord based. Yeah, you're a strummer. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a strumming guitarist, you're, you're, that generally is the role of a rhythm guitarist. If you're lead based, you playing tend to be playing less chords and more single single note stuff, you know? So Yeah, if you're playing those type of things, triads. Yeah riffs that type of thing that tends to be lead guitar and if you're playing bass then you know you're probably a big hairy dude with you know usually the worst guitar player in the band ends up being the bass player <laughs> don't tell new bass players i said that you know oh, fair enough proper bassists are amazing but most of the time it's the guy who's the worst guitarist who ends up getting shoved off with the bass um bass guitar is a really really different skill to playing you know guitar um, it's really a rhythmic instrument, isn't it? Primarily bass guitar. But I think if you try some of those other roles, it forces you into a different mindset completely. If you're doing rhythm guitar, you're kind of carrying the chords, you're building a foundation for the song. If you're doing lead guitar, you don't need to play all the time. You can just make contributions here and there. And that's a very, very different skill to being a rhythm guitarist. If you're playing bass, you've got to get tight in with the drums. You're the rhythm section of the band. It's a super important role out of a bass player. And I think playing the bass is like, it's a complete, it's, it's a very, very different mindset to playing guitar. 
I think when you start playing the bass, you start getting, you know, if you start if you start landing it properly, I think you get an appreciation of scales and arpeggios sort of faster than you do when you're playing the when you're playing guitar. So if you feel like you're stuck in a rut and you want to break into some new ground, try a different role. Okay, number nine. Uh, oh no, sorry, number ten. Well, this is a good one. Got to keep. You might want to keep this one quiet from your wife or husband. Um, is buy a new guitar. Now I'm sort of buying too many guitars. I think um, lately I'm going to confess to that. I think I'm a guitaraholic. Um, but if you if you need something new and to inspire you as a, as a musician, try getting a new guitar. You know, get a twelve string guitar if you don't have one. Try an acoustic bass. You know. Um, get an electric guitar that's got humbuckers in it instead of single coils, you know, with different pickups. Get a guitar that's got P90s in it. If you've only got Fenders, you know, buy a Gibson. Um, I think different guitars make you play in different ways. Um, I never really appreciated just how much that was the case um, until probably about five years ago, really. I really started to really realize, like, wow, I play differently when I use that guitar. Um, so yeah, so there you go. And if you get any grief off your wife or your husband, you can say, you know, I can't. Do this this guy on YouTube recommended it was a great way to get better at guitar was to buy new guitars. So I'm sorry, I've got to buy some new guitars. <laughs> um, okay, next number eleven on our list of fifteen things here. It's put different strings on your guitar. So you can try different gauge of strings. You know, if you're used to playing on nines. Try playing tens, it makes a big difference, you know. Try playing elevens, try playing twelves. Changing the gauge of your string again massively changes how you play the guitar. Um, you know, like a couple of years ago I realized I was I was just doing way too many bends on the guitar. I was just kind of relying on bends a bit too much. Um, so I tried putting on some heavy gauge strings that sort of disinclines me to bend the strings as much. And it stopped me doing that, you know, made me start voicing phrases differently. And it made me start playing on one string more, which was really quite interesting. Um, so yeah, putting new strings on the guitar makes a big difference. Also, you know, try some other string types. So for example, flat wound strings makes you play differently. Um, you know, uh, balance tension strings. I've got some cobalt strings here, which I haven't tried yet, but they're meant to sound really different. So I think, you know, just, just all, if you can't buy another guitar, then just altering the guitar that you have can make a big difference to how you play and push you into some new areas. Okay, next, number 12, try some different tunings. So on the guitar you have, or on one of your spare guitars, if you have any others, try something different. You know, I, I, I will regularly tune my guitars down just to get a different tone out of them. You know, like, I like playing blues in D standard, where I tune down to, you know, two steps. It gives it a kind of gritty, more earthy feel, which I really like. Sometimes I'll just tune down to E flat standard, so just one step down because for some reason it just suits my voice a lot more. As I'm getting older, I can't sing quite as high as I used to, so I will often just tune down a little, um, and it makes a really big difference. You know, there's notes all of, a, all of a sudden you can hit that you couldn't previously hit. Um, but also explore other things like drop D. You know, recently I was playing um, a couple of Neil Young tracks, and some of his stuff is in drop D. Harvest Moon, you know, one of my favorite acoustic tracks ever. You know, that's in drop D. Um, this uh, Fleetwood Mac track I've been playing lately, the finger picking track, Never Going Back Again or something like that, that's in drop D. Um, again, it makes the instrument feel fresh and new. Uh, and if you want to push that even further, try some other things like other tunings like Open E, Open G, break out a slide, start playing slide guitar. Um, the other tuning that's really good fun to play around with is Dadgad, which is um, like a folk tuning. You know, like all of a sudden all the chord shapes are different. It's like, it's wild. You know, you start writing songs you would never write in standard tuning. I think changing the tuning of your guitar is one of the fastest ways that your guitar feels new and fresh. And it's completely free. It's very cool. You know, you don't need to buy anything or change the pickups or get a new guitar or anything. Okay, we're nearly at the end of our list. Let's keep going. This is, this is good. We're on track. This is good. Um, number 13 on our list of 15, and that is... Um, try some different techniques so maybe you've never really tried finger style guitar like you know if you're a strummer and you're mainly used to using um, a pick yeah then how does that sound if you start developing some finger style yeah, you get some really different sounds
play when you play finger style you know it can you get more space you get more rhythmic options music to me is is is, is almost always sounds more sophisticated and interesting when the chords aren't just played there's like a block of notes that hit you in one go you know i don't know why that's the case maybe it's just because you can hear what the chords built from and what's in there it just makes it more interesting to me when the notes fall like rain you know it's like a texture that you're hearing rather than just blocks of, of wave sounds um, finger picking is i absolutely love fing finger style guitar to me is brilliant um and yeah if that is, isn't something you've explored and you want to grow as a musician dude get into finger style it's amazing um also like we mentioned before you could try some slide guitar which is a really cool technique you know for tr for, for trying getting some new sounds out of your guitar um there's other things you can try like you know there's like claw picks that you put on your fingers like that's always intrigued me when i see people playing with them um or if you want if you want us to fall out and not be friends you could try some thumb picks which some people really like which which i i really can't stand them but some people like them you know give them a try all right number 14 and that is all i've written here is jazz <laughs> there's nothing else except jazz um I've, we recently fit for, for the membership which i'll tell you more about later um for the new nga membership which we're launching we've filmed some new courses for that which you know we've never released before the only way to get them is inside the membership and one of those courses uh, is a course called jazz secrets which i filmed here with jack taylor jack is a brilliant jazz guitarist and he teaches it he's a music lecturer a, a brilliant musician um and one of the things that became clear to me through doing that course and this is one of the reasons why we did the course is how much having a knowledge of jazz helps you in other genres and makes you a much much more interesting a well-rounded musician as a guitarist if you've got an appreciation of jazz you don't need to become a jazz guy i'm not a jazz guy um and, and I've always stayed away from jazz a bit because of that, because it's like, I'm not really a big fan of jazz. I like some jazz. I find it very relaxing and cool. Um, but some of the sort of more atonal dissonant stuff that doesn't really resolve, you know, it just doesn't sound like music to me. Um, but there are elements of jazz that I think are super cool and move over very, very nicely to, you know, sort of more mainstream popular music, which is more what I play on the guitar. A good example of that would be someone like Stevie Wonder, Carlos Santana, you know, they bring in lots of elements of jazz into their music and it makes what they play much more interesting than if they were just playing, you know, standard pentatonic or blues scales, or blues harmonies over, you know, over the music. Um, so if you're not interested in jazz and you want to grow as a musician, you feel like you've stagnated, that's a great avenue to explore. I think that's one genre. You know, I think on the guitar, really, most people, I think, think about blues and rock and folk you know indie that type of thing but i think jazz is one that often gets left out which is weird because it complements those other genres so well um so if you kind of if you're a bit of a jazz phobe jazzophobe like me then get over it and check out jazz it's it's very cool and number 15 on our list of 15 is to experiment with effects so whether it's loopers delays reverbs you know fuzz compression distortion whatever it might be um you play differently when you use an effects so if i'm playing on the acoustic or if i'm playing clean on my electric guitar i'm playing completely different stuff than when I've, i'm using effects um so i think that's a really good way to appreciate the guitar in a deeper way sometimes through playing a lot less one of the cool things with effects like one pedal that i recently got which is just amazing i'm in love with this pedal uh, it's the strymon flint and it is a reverb and a tremolo pedal it's sort of built in together and like they just pair together in such a gorgeous way reverb and, and tremolo you get them together and all of a sudden you create these really moody interesting soundscapes um, and you don't need to play very much in fact sometimes you can play very little you just turn up the reverb and add some of that tremolo effect to create some movement and all of a sudden you've got these really atmospheric soundscapes that sound huge you know from just a couple of notes so i think i think having an appreciation of guitar effects obviously helps any electric guitarist but if you want to grow as a musician and be consistently making progress as a guitarist which is the point of this live stream and i think effects play a huge role in that um 
Okay, that's our list of 15. Wow, we covered a lot of ground there. Um, so yeah, we've got 15 different things that we that we went through there. I'll just recap them very, very quickly. Number one, practice regularly. Two, cross new thresholds as a guitarist. We spoke about them. Open chords, bar chords, pentatonic scales, basic theory. Learn new songs, try new genres. Number four, play with others. Number five, watch other guitarists. Watch what they do when you hear a tone you like. See, look at the technique they use to create that. Number six, courses. Number seven, books. Number eight, YouTube. Number nine, try a new role. Try lead guitar, bass guitar, rhythm guitar. Number 10, buy a new guitar. Number 11, put different strings on your guitar. Number 12, try different tunings. Number 13, try some different techniques like finger picking, slide and so on. Number 14, jazz, try jazz. And number 15, experiment with new effects. All right, so I've thrown a lot at you there. Um, so let me check back in and have a look at some of the comments here. <laughs> first one I see is from Cheryl, I loathe jazz. I hear you, I hear you Cheryl, I'm not a jazz guy but I, I, I really am developing an appreciation of some of those rich and interesting jazz chords, it's so cool. Um, okay, Diane's in Chester, yes Diane, you're a Chesterite, Recestrian I think they say don't they, Chesteronians, I don't know. Um, yeah, okay, so, yeah, no problem, Just a few people saying thank you for the lesson, no, mate, it's my pleasure, thank you, for, uh, thank you for the time you took out of the day to come here, Silver Ghost. Gary says that he went blind a couple of years ago and started learning the guitar, there isn't really any help out there for blind guitarists, though, yeah, yeah, Gary, I don't know, yeah, I really don't know what the answer is to that, I'm not sure of many resources for blind guitarists at all. Yeah, let me let me just make a note of that. I'm going to try and look into that because I would like to know more about that. Um, there's lots of help out there for guitarists who are, um, you know, like have mobility issues and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't. I really don't know of many resources for blind guitarists. I'm going to look into that. Maybe we could do a guide on our website for that. Um... <laughs> Jerry says, when I screw up, my brother says to call it jazz. <laughs> yeah, so like if you're playing and you hit a bit of a dodgy note. It's like, instead of, instead of like, oh, I messed up, it's like, I was trying some jazz, you know, some experimental jazz. I was experimenting with dissonant jazz. <laughs> I like that, Jerry. Uh, this is great. Thank you for your comments, everybody. Please, um, please keep them coming. It's good to hear this. Um, Sema said uh, she missed the first part. She hopes it's being recorded. Uh, yes, it is. But we're using this weird thing. Well, it's not weird. It's actually really cool. But it's the first time I've ever used it. It's called StreamYard. And I think that's recording that is set up to record it. But also, I think it's going to get saved on YouTube. I think, I don't know. I think maybe YouTube auto saves it at the end. Or maybe I have the option to save it, but any one way or the other, it will be on YouTube um, after this. Um, Cheryl says um, she loves all of her guitars. Uh, so much fun with a looper. Yeah, loopers are great, great fun. Um, Tommy says he can do bar chords, but he's not sure what else he can do with that F and B minor. How do I learn more about bar chords to write songs and stuff? So, uh, t sorry, Tammy, not Tommy, my eyes are going. Um, Tammy, to learn more about bar chords, we've got a course called Bar Chord Secrets, which is a, a brilliant course. It's a relatively short course, about four to five hours long. Um, but that's a really, really cool course for just getting, you know, it kind of goes from beginner to, uh, to advanced bar chords. It's a great place to move through that. Um, Ted, what's the best way to learn the pentatonic scale? Um, I think it's just to start off with box one, just keep it really simple, Ted. So it's just like if I play the A minor pentatonic scale, we're going to start off on A and just learn that pattern. One finger per fret. If you Google National Guitar Academy pentatonic scale, then that will take you to the guide on our website. We've got like a couple of really epic guides on the pentatonic scale. Um, so if you, yeah, if you just Google that National Guitar Academy pentatonic scale, that will take you over to the site. Um, and you can find out much more information there. 
Um, okay, so so listen, everybody. Um, I am going to show you some information about um, the end the new NGA membership. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to say, just to summarise that list of fifteen, the, the key thing that I wanted to leave you with there, and then we'll come back for the, some Q and A in a minute. Um, is it's all about intentionality. So when you want to keep getting better as a guitarist and you feel like you're stuck in a rut, it's all about you intentionally pushing into new areas where you haven't been. And loads of people don't do that. They just kind of sit in the one place and they kind of stay there and complain. You know, it's like, no, like you've got to, you've got to intentionally move into new areas. You've got to intentionally seek out new things that you can do um, and that you can explore as a musician. It, it requires effort to do. Um, these things don't fall in your lap, you know, you have to push out there and, and see what else is there. It's, it's all about intentionality, I think. You have to be an explorer, you know, like, you can't stay in the Shire. You know, you've got to leave, you've got to go and have an adventure and be intentional about it. Um, Alright, cool. So, as you can tell, probably from, you know, from everything I've shared in this video, and also if you've been following our stuff for, for, for long, um, you will know that, um, you know, I've been teaching guitar for a long time, you know, like since I was... You know, so most of my twenties, I was in, I was in a band, and then since then, really, so like for most of my thirties, I've been teaching guitar. I've spent over twenty thousand hours of my life teaching guitar, and I've seen people struggle with this stuff for years. Lots of the things that we've spoken about here. Um, so what we've created with the new NGA membership, it started off one day where I had the idea. I was always creating learning plans for our students um, and, they, and it worked great, you know, because if you can sit in a room with someone, see what's challenging them as a guitarist, you can, where their, where their weak points are, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, you can give them a customised learning plan that they can follow. And for years I wanted to be able to do that for our National Guitar Academy students, but it's hard when you're not in the room with people. Um, so we created something brand new, it's a soft bit, a piece of software, it's taken ages to get it right, but it's really cool and it's kind of the, um, it's one of the main parts of this new membership that we've created it's got five cool features on new membership which i think is the easiest way to to explain is to say look look here's the new nga membership there's five cool things that are in here the first of them is called guitar metrics so this will show you how you can get a customized learning plan now i'm going to try this i don't know if this is going to work all right we're going to give this a try this might not work <laughs> but i'm going to try and show you a video about the new membership um which goes live tomorrow so this is quite exciting and nobody's ever seen this before. Um, having said that, it might not work because when it comes to technology, I'm pretty bad. Let's give this a try. Hopefully it will work. Please let me know in the chat if you don't see a new video playing in the next few seconds. Hopefully you will do. Let's give it a try. Three, two, one. Congratulations, you've somehow arrived here on this sign-up page for the world's best online guitar school. My name is Mike Kennedy and I'm going to share with you five things that you will love when you sign up to become a National Guitar Academy member today. Okay, first of all, you will get a personalised guitar learning plan that is customised just to you. When you become a National Guitar Academy member, you get access to our Guitar Metrics system. The way Guitar Metrics works is you sign up, you take an assessment, and then you will receive a learning plan, which pinpoints your weaknesses, highlights your biggest opportunities to improve, and basically gives you a guitar learning roadmap that you can follow. There's no room for doubt or ambiguity. It's very, very clear and specific. Do this, then this, then this. It's a step-by-step -step roadmap you can follow to reach the next level as a guitarist, whatever that means for you. Guitar Metrics is the centerpiece of your National Guitar Academy membership because it's your own personalized guitar journey that you follow. Our members absolutely love it and you will too. Okay, number two, you get unlimited access to a world-class library of online guitar courses. This really is a lifetime of guitar tuition and wisdom. We've got intermediate courses, beginner courses, courses that focus on chords, rhythm, theory, strumming, finger picking, blues. So whether you're just getting started and are a complete new guitarist, or whether you return into the guitar after a while, or whether you're an intermediate guitarist, whatever level of the guitar journey you're at, we've got courses that will help you. These courses were made with love and passion, and I think that comes through. You know, when you make something with love and passion, I think that shines through in the end result. All of these courses were carefully designed so you can learn at your own pace, and in a way, in a shape and a time that suits you and your life. Plus you get access to all of the brand new courses and series that we will be adding to the course library over the coming months and years. They will all be membership exclusives. The only way you can access these courses is to be a National Guitar Academy member.
Number three, you get access to an amazing community of generous and warm-hearted guitar learners. The community campus and learning forum is the heart of your membership. It's where everything happens. It's where your membership lives and breathes. That's where people gather. That's where the NGA team are. I'm there every day. So are the rest of our team. And that's where all of your fellow members and guitar learners are. The community campus and learning forum is a truly epic resource. It is jam-packed with tips, useful advice, handy resources that you can use that will help you as you move along your guitar journey and best of all there are just so many friendly and welcoming people in there okay super important point there are no elitists in our community that is not what we're about at all we're all learners we're all learning together no question is a silly question everyone is welcome everyone is here to help you you won't be judged or mocked if you're not good enough or you know i hate all that stuff and that that really isn't part of our vibe at all everybody is welcome here we've got students from pretty much every country in the world of every ability level you can imagine and i think the culture and the vibe of our community is something uh, in fact that is the thing i'm most proud about for national guitar academy it's the way we support one another it's the way we welcome new members it's the way everybody kind of pulls together it's a really great community atmosphere so whether you want to upload videos of your playing to get direct feedback and critique on your playing or you want to talk about guitar gear or you just want some general advice or help or tips whatever it is you'll get those answers and the best possible advice inside our amazing community campus and learning forum Number four, you get access to our song library, which is packed with hundreds of chord sheets, tabs, song sheets, guidance, learning notes. And one of the really cool things is all of those songs are labeled by difficulty level. So it's really easy for you to identify the songs that are most suitable for your level. Building your repertoire as a guitarist is one of the best things you can do because it's lots of fun but also it really improves you as a guitarist. You always take something from a song you learn. It might just be a small thing, but every song you learn, you take something from it, and that goes into your toolkit as a guitarist. Number five, we have regular live streams, seminars, workshops, and Q&A sessions. So if you want to learn from world-class guitar educators, interact in real time, get all your questions answered, speak to your fellow guitar learners and NGA members, and you really enjoy these live sessions. They're lots of fun. There's a different energy when things are live, and I think, well, I know that for lots of our members, the live streams are a real highlight of their membership and you can basically bring anything that you want to those sessions if something is guitar related or even music related it's valid for discussion in those live streams so whatever is on your mind anything you're struggling with any questions you've got bring those along to the live streams and we can get stuck into that together you will absolutely love the live streams i guarantee it Okay, they're the five things I wanted to share with you. We've got Guitar Metrics, we've got the courses, we've got our amazing community campus and learning forum, we've got the song library, and we've got these regular brilliant live streams that are lots of fun. And I wanted to point out a couple of other things to you. Number one, National Guitar Academy membership is amazing value. You know, for just one low monthly payment, you get access to all of this material. It's an amazing deal, and I'm really proud of that. You know, we've deliberately kept our costs lower than we know they could be you know we made a decision to keep our subscription costs very low because we want to help as many people as we can our company mission is that we use music to spread joy and reduce suffering and we want to make what we have here available to as many people as we can we don't try and tie people into contracts or minimum terms or any of that corporate rubbish that's not who we are it's not what we stand for it's not the difference we want to make in the world so you can cancel at any time you can come and go as you please we want this to be a very relaxed friendly and a human experience we are not a corporation a big technology company or anything you know this is not about algorithms (laughs) this is about human beings it's about connection it's about us celebrating this amazing gift of music together as i always say music is a unifying force it crosses all of the boundaries that normally define us economics borders politics geography gender social status you know whatever it is language even time itself music transcends all of those boundaries all the things that usually divide us as humans sort of fall away when it comes to music and that's something that i love i think it's a really beautiful and unique thing and it's one of the reasons why we do what we do i hope all of this sounds like something you want to be part of something you want to get behind if you're still on the fence we have hundreds of five-star reviews on facebook go and read them 
see what people say about our courses, about me, about the rest of the team, about NGA membership, how it's helped them, how it's affected them, what they think about it. I'm sure you'll like what you see there and feel reassured. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about what National Guitar Academy membership is, what's inside, why it's the most amazing online guitar school in the world, why we've got such an incredible community, and also why it's such brilliant value. I hope all of this sounds like something you want to be part of, and hopefully I'll see you inside the membership soon. Okay, so hopefully you guys can still hear me. Are we back? Can you hear me okay? <clears throat> I can't believe that actually worked, by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. Um, yeah, the wow, the StreamYard stuff, it actually seems to work. Um, so listen, what I wanted, what I'd like us to do now. Thank you, everybody, for letting me know. You got me back. Nice. Um, so what I thought we could do now is do some Q and A. So it could be about any of the stuff we spoke about earlier on on the call, or it could be about the NGA membership. Um, whatever you guys want, I am here for you. Anything you're struggling with on the guitar, any questions you have, please post them here, um, and we can discuss. We can discuss that. Okay, let me scroll back through the comments here and just see. I don't want to. I want to check that I haven't missed anybody's questions from earlier on. I think I got most of them. Yeah. So there's a comment here earlier on from Daddy Coolster, um, Lennon caged on pentatonic, um, but struggle improvising. Yeah, I think if you're struggling with that, what I would suggest is that don't don't worry too much about learning the C, the G and the D from Caged. If you're struggling with that, just focus on the A and the E shapes. They're the most important ones. So if you're struggling with it, then I think it makes sense to simplify and like reduce the amount of stuff that you're trying to take on board there. I would just concentrate on E and A shapes. That should make that quite a bit easier. Um, Tasha asks, are bar chords really possible for all hands? Yes, they are. Um, my fingers so struggle to reach and keep the pointed finger flat down. I think what yeah, I think what you meant there, Tasha, was maybe your fingers are short. Is that what you're going to say? Um, usually that's something that people really worry about. It's when their fingers are short. Um, this is quite a common question that we get asked all the time. Are my fingers too short to play certain chords? Um, and in almost every case, then they're, they're not. If you're running out of, if you don't have the reach, Tasha, all you need to do is lower your thumb and move your wrist forwards. Uh, I was just explaining this to somebody just today, but you, you have a, a certain amount of reach from your thumb to your first finger, and that's your reach as a guitarist. If your thumb is up here, then your, your finger can only get so high. Look at my first finger there. Yeah, that's as high as it can go. If I lower my thumb, <coughs> move my wrist forwards, look how much higher my first finger can go. Anytime you feel like you can't reach for a chord, you just need to lower your thumb about halfway on the guitar neck and move your wrist forwards and it will give you much, much more reach. Um, we don't, you, it's okay for your hand to be mostly in front of the guitar neck. You know, a lot of people think that your hand is behind the guitar and then your fingers go in front, but that's not how it works. Your whole hand can be in front of the neck. So, but it feels precarious and weird to begin with. You feel like your hand's unsupported and floating in midair. You feel like you don't have much control over it, but you will get over that quite quickly. 
Um, Jerry, love the Shire reference. Yes, mate. Lord of the Rings, one of my favourite favourite books ever. Um, okay, I'm just trying to cycle through these questions here. Check we haven't missed everybody. Um, Seema asked if we've taken course with N with NGA, are we automatically a member? No, is the answer to that, Seema. If you've uh, if you've bought NGA courses, you've still got them. Like you own them for life. You know we're not going to take anything away from anybody. But this is a brand new thing. You know there's all kinds of stuff in the membership which isn't in those other courses. So this is very much a separate and, and new thing. Um, and also, I don't think. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. If it's a complete flop, <laughs> I might have to completely change change tack here. Um, but the plan is, I don't know. If we're, if, I don't think we're going to sell courses individually anymore. I think they'll just be the membership because um, we're just trying to simplify things. And also, we've been absolutely hammered in the last year. Like since COVID, we've like a lot, like a lot of small businesses, we've really struggled. So we're having to change change track in a, in a big way. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we think the membership will work because basically everybody's skint. I don't know what it's like in Canada right now, um, but everybody in England is, is is struggling right now. So we think that having a, a much much lower cost will hopefully work better for people and allow us to bring more people on board as well. Um, Cheryl, I'm in Canada. There's lots of Canadians on the call today. This is good. Ad Adam will be happy about this. Um, Adam, who works with us. Um, is based in Toronto. It seems like t Toronto is everywhere lately. The Toron Torontonians are taking over the world. Um, I'm in Canada. Do I pay in Canadian dollars if I join? I don't like to convert to other funds. Uh, yes, you do pay. We charge in US dollars because the majority of our customers are in America. So we price our courses in, in, in dollars, price the membership in dollars. Um, but when you pay, it just gets deducted from your bank account in Canadian dollars. Um, all right, let me scroll down here. Ted asks, um, does a looper help you to learn? Massively so, Ted. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it helps you learn in a lot of ways. The best thing about a looper is that you can just lay down some chords really quickly and like in seconds, and then you can improvise lead guitar over it. So I think loopers are a brilliant way to get better at lead guitar. It's a brilliant way to get better at phrases, riffs, scales. Um, you can basically accompany yourself. When we spoke earlier about roles, you know, you can be the rhythm guitarist and just lay down some chords that you can play over. And then that you set the looper going and it plays back what you just played. And then you can play some lead over those chords. But while you're playing that, you can hear the chords that you've already played. So it's a great way. You can be like a one-man band almost, you know. Um, and you can take that much further with, you know, you can add drum machines to it and all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I love loopers. I think they're a really cool learning tool. Um, Steve asks, uh, what about the ring finger and the pinky struggling with this? Um, Steve, give us a bit more information, mate. What do you, what do you mean by that? Is it that you're you don't have the control and strength in those fingers or is there a particular chord you're struggling with um yes Seema. i don't know if your name's Seema or Sema. i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing it wrong i'm gonna go with Sema. i think um Sema, um yes we do have paypal Sema asks the membership sounds like a good plan do you use paypal yes we do and um, we added paypal as an option it's quite hard to sort of get it to do everything we wanted it to do um, but we added it because I know a lot of people would prefer that option. Um, we've never really used PayPal that much in the past, um, but we are using that for the membership um, just to make it easy. And a lot of people are more comfortable paying using PayPal, so that's fine. Um, Cheryl says, with a looper, you can play all parts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if you get an octave pedal, you know, just like a cheap octave pedal for 20 quid off Amazon or something, then you can play bass as well. You know, you can just use your normal guitar, but turn on the octave pedal to move the sound down. And then you can bass, you can literally play bass, lead and rhythm all with one guitar using a looper. So much fun. They're really, really good fun loopers. Um, what else have we got here? Yes, yeah, Steve says, uh, exercises yeah so exercises to strengthen the, your pinky finger and your and your uh, your ring finger again the, the best way for me to explain this steve is to just say if you google national guitar academy uh, finger exercises there's th i think there's three different guides on our website 
that have loads of different exercises that you can use and tips for how to strengthen those fingers. Um, we put a lot of effort into making them last year. Um, so if you just Google that, there's way more information that will be useful for you there than for me to explain now. I think that's probably the easiest um, the easiest one for you to for, for you to try. Semma, yes, as in semaphore. <laughs> it's a good way to explain it. Um, do you use Zelle? I don't know what Zelle is. Is that some type of payment payment provider or something along those lines? Yeah, you're welcome, Steve. No worries. Um, all right, so listen, everybody. I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, we've been going for an hour. I think I've answered most of the questions. If if you asked a question and I've missed it, then please post it now before before I end the, the call. I don't want to leave anyone hanging. Um, I think I answered everything, but it's sort of hard to see. Um, let's see. John, if I visit the Liverpool area, am I able to pop in and meet you and the team? Yeah, mate, if you're nearby, get in touch. Get in touch. We'll happily meet for a pint and a chat. Um, Andy, who works for us, who is in charge of our new forum, he is always here busking outside the town hall every day. Uh, we can go and sit by Andy and, uh, and have a chat. Uh, yeah, cool. So, so listen, everybody, I think, I think we've answered everything. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the call today. I hope you got a lot out of it. We covered so much ground earlier on. It was crazy in the, um, I know I threw a lot threw a lot at you in that first part of the call, but hopefully you learned some new things, got some new ideas, and were inspired to try some new things and go in a slightly different direction. I hope you've enjoyed everything that we've shared today. Hope you're excited about the NGA membership. I certainly am. It's a whole new thing for us. It's a brand new chapter. Um, you're really, really looking forward to getting started with that. And, yeah, um, I, uh, if for everybody who's on this call right now, there is a link in the video description. And if you go over there, you can go to the membership and there's some early bird pricing that's there that will not be available in the future. NGA membership will never, ever be available for the price for a lower price than it is right now um, during the launch. So if you want to join, if you want to be part of this, then now is a great time to give it a go. Um, there's no contracts or anything. You can cancel at any time. If it's not for you, it's not for you. It's absolutely fine. Um, but I hope hopefully I'll see you inside the membership. And if not, no worries. Um, I will hopefully see you back here on YouTube soon. Thank you everybody for joining the call. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for supporting us in this new uh, in this new chapter for us. And yeah, I will speak with you all soon. Thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of your night.